Bree Smith, College University, Janet. Um, for those of you who don't know me, for those of you who do know me, hello. Um, I will try to stand a bit stiller on the stage than Mark did. As a man who's obviously afraid of uh, being an easy target for sharpshooters. <laughs> so, I'm going to tell you about a couple of tools that are now available. So, um, talk about Raptor and Mujin. Wonderfully named little tools. So, for those who don't know what Raptor is, okay, let's do this hand thing. How many of you don't know what Raptor is? How many of you have never heard of Wujun? Never heard yeah. of what? Wujun. A couple of slides done. <laughs> How many of you have had enough of raising your hands for one more? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, well, not many, but which are okay. Okay, so for those who don't know what Raptor is, it is, um, so it's, it's a project that uh, we developed at Cardiff with JISC funding. Um, we, uh, it, it's essentially a log file parser, which makes nice pretty graphs. Um, it's a single point for librarians and IT people to see what people are actually doing on their systems. Because the move from Athens to Shibboleth um, way back when, a little while ago now, means we went from having nice spreadsheets that EduServe gave people about who's accessing what to log files, which uh, you could only get information out about what people are doing if you knew how to use things like grep, which not a huge amount of librarians do know how to. Um, so we went and built something to help them. So yeah, funded by Joe's, built by Cardiff, um, released about a year ago, the first version of it. Um, it is built to handle multiple systems. What I mean by this is if you have a Shibboleth IDP or an Open Athens LA IDP or a radius, free radius server for EduRoom or simple sample PHP IDP or SP or easy proxy, any of these things which people use to authenticate and get access to e-resources or things like that. Um, you have, if you have all of these systems, you have lots of log files in different places. No single place to go and look at stuff. Why is looking at stuff important? Because institutions need to see what's being done. In the world of budgets shrinking, you need to prove value for money for all of the resources you're paying money for. You need to see which are uh, being used the most, which are being used the least, either to maybe drop the ones which aren't being used at least, or to promote the ones you think should be used more. Well, there, increased business intelligence is what it's all about. And on top of that, so that's all of you guys who are in institutions who need to see what your users are actually doing. Um, with uh, the anatomy of Cardiff, with the other hat on, Janet, um, just collections, we need to be able to prove how much the Federation is being used, because we're getting a big chunk of money um, from Hefke and Biz to, meet, to make your membership free. So, you know, they're funding your, uh, the ability for you to join the Federation. And obviously they want to know that it's actually being used. So we need to be able to prove value for money as well. So what we set about building Raptor. We had a few kind of key goals we were trying to achieve. It needed to be absolutely easy to install and configure because there are, you know, some of the big universities might be able to throw some resources into understanding complex things. If you've ever tried to set up the Shibboleth IDP, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> if you are a smaller college, you don't have much time, much manpower available, it needs to be as easy as possible, preferably just a few clicks. Um, so that's what we did with Raptor. We made it a few clicks to install. It needs to have a nice web front end for non-technical people, so it needs to have nice pretty graphs of what people are doing. You don't have to know SQL, things like that, if you want to go and get information, how to use grep, all that kind of thing. And just because it's the kind of people we are, we want it to be open source, standards based, that kind of thing. So, we built that. So Raptor is currently at, I think, 1.1, 1.2 might be coming out in a month or so. But these are just updates with additional features, um, what we currently support is the Shibboleth IDP, version 1 and 2, Shibboleth SP. So it's, it's, not all, it's not just about what your users are doing. If you have services that people are logging into as well, you can see where they're coming from, that kind of thing. And easy proxy. 
The next version will include support for free radius, radiator, and uh, RADSEC proxy, so all the main systems you use if you're an edge room person, well, organization, or an edge room person, that's a bit weird. Um, and coming soon at some point, simple sample PHP we're going to do as well. Um, some open Athens stuff, open Athens LA, and just statistics. I think I have another slide on that in a little while. If not, I'll just tell you now. Um, it's available on Windows, Linux, anything else via source. So Windows, it's just MSIs, so Windows installers. You just click next several times and then finish, and it works. Um, Linux, you type in yum install raptor all, and it downloads it, installs it, configures it. If you want to do something more advanced configuration, there's some stuff you need to do, but the basic stuff is literally just that, and it should just work. Um, not going to go into too much detail, you don't need to know this, but it's basically a kind of client server thing. So you have the thing which sits on your machine, which is generating log files, and it looks through them regularly, sees what's going on, sends it to the Raptor server. Raptor server receives these, puts it in a database, knows how to query it. That's what it's all about. And then there's a web front end. Um, it's hierarchical in nature. Your Raptor server, at your institution, is the thing you log into to see what's going on, and you get all these nice graphs. We, I have another slide on this, the UK Federation, we need to prove stats as well. We have a Raptor server. Your Raptor server can anonymize the information and send it to us so we can get an idea of what's going on in um, an aggregate of the whole, in a whole range of institutions. So it's our way of getting a little view of what's going on. Yep, easy to install, but you said that. Um, just to reiterate this, because it is important, why do you need this? If you're, in, if you're an institution, you need this information, you need to make budgetary decisions, business intelligence, potential to helping detect problems, you can see if, uh, if, you know, trend analysis, you can see if something changes. If something's changed in behavior, why is it changed? Has something gotten better, has something gotten worse, has something broken? Could help with that kind of thing. And that's wrapped up, pretty much. And just some screenshots of some nice graphs just to show you the kind of thing it does. You end up with a nice little, uh, you log into the web interface, and that's what people have been doing on Cardiff's IDP on whatever day that was. The 18th of December 2011. Little Batman head over in the corner. <laughs> so, quick access to stats, and then you can go in and start delving into these stats and start breaking stuff down. So, of authentications across all service providers from our SAML IDP. So you can see there's, there's a few that dominate. Uh, you can start diving into things. So one thing Raptor lets you do is not just take, so your logs will contain this user logged into this site at this time. What uh, Raptor can then do is hook up to your LDAP or a database and pull back information about, say, what, what department they're in, what affiliation they have, whether they're an undergrad, they're postgrad, they teaching staff, whatever. And then you can start graphing by that. So I have a graph of the top 10 services ordered by use for our computer science department. So you can start really delving in. You can see which, which departments are using which resources, uh, which types of students are using which types of resources, all those kind of things. Kind of cool. Different kinds of graphs, all nice and pretty. You do comparisons of different things, you know, multiple. Uh, uh, series on the same same graph, so you can do nice simple comparisons, that kind of thing. And that's wrapped up. Um, the aggregator bit I was talking about, we have set up a UK Federation aggregator. So by default, Raptor is just a you install it at your institution, it works. We have this interest at the higher level of having the stats for the UK Federation, so we've set up a Raptor server. And we've been piloting it with uh, four or five friendly institutions, um, making sure it all works and fixing some bugs that crept in when we started doing this for real. Um, and it's now there and it's working and it works well. So the plea to the community, which we will start uh, being a bit more vocal about in the coming weeks and months, is if you are a Raptor using institution uh, or 
if you are going to be in the future, it would be very nice if you uh, enabled this aggregation feature for us. So the default config of all of this means that uh, it, to, to enable this in your Aptus server, you go and change one thing from false to true in one of the config files, and you send us an email with um, some information that we need, and then it should just start working. So it's quite easy, and that includes, it anonymizes all the usernames, strips information like departments and that kind of thing, and then sends it to us. Um, why should you take part? What, what's the incentive for you here? There's no, the, the, a direct incentive is hard to uh, articulate. The actual incentive for you guys is we need to prove this to uh, carry on getting funding to run the UK Federation so it's free for you guys. If we can't prove that, you draw your own conclusions about the future. So help us, help you, all that kind of good community stuff would be very good. If you are willing to do this, to become one of the early adopters before we start trying to push this bit in a wider way, um, just restart smith at ja.net, send me an email, and give you instructions how to do it. It's literally a few minutes work. Nice and easy. So that's one of the tools. It's kind of exciting for you guys. I know librarians in Cardiff are really using this a lot, getting stats about what's going on. Very useful. For those who are doing more complex stuff with Raptor, so Raptor, I said we support a certain amount of systems, can be extended to do anything you want. So the guys in Newcastle have been doing this pretty well. I've been extending to use things like Grouper and some of their own custom, really interesting stuff. Um, if you are interested in going beyond the normal use of Raptor, we are going to be holding a developers workshop in London on Monday, December the 10th. This will be a we will be emailing details out about this um, later on. But it's just Raptor Dev Workshop of Eventbrite.co.uk if you want to sign up for it. So we're free to attend, some lunch, that kind of thing. It's not a workshop for people who are interested in using Raptor. If you are a librarian, you probably don't want to be here. It's going to be a very technical workshop. We've had some less technical workshops. If there is demand for more, we might run some more kind of intro workshops. If you do want that, let me or Mark know, and at the point we have enough people who are interested, we'll run another one. But this is a developer workshop for the techies who want to get down and dirty and under the hood. And that's Raptor. The other thing to say quickly is Woojin is the Wafeless URL generator. If you have to create Wafeless URLs, so a Wafeless URL being the normal login process for Logging into, say, a, a, an e-journal site is go to the journal site, hit login, get sent to the discovery service where you say, I'm from Birmingham City University. And then you get sent back to the site. No, sorry, you get sent to your IDP, you log in, you get sent back to the site. Wafeless URLs are URLs you can construct that go on your own, say, A to Z database pages on your library website, where you can say, you know, if you're a uh, Cardiff University user, go to this portal, go to that portal, hit the link for Science Direct, you go straight to Science Direct, or rather you get sent straight to your IDP and straight to Science Direct without having to do this discovery step. Um, the problem, so that's all well and good. Wakeless URLs are good for that kind of thing. The problem is they're an absolute bitch to, uh, <laughs> to, uh, to create. And there are many kinds of them, and some of them are better than others. Um, and you have to do URL encoding on them and things like that, which are not the least technical things in the world to do. So we built the Wafeless URL generator, which is a little tool where you go to this little web application, you say, I am from Cardiff University. I want to go to Science Direct. When I've logged in, send me to this page. Hit finish, and it'll generate the best kind of link for you. And you just copy and paste it. It can then email you if you want. And also, I said there are different kinds of Wafeless URLs. Some are better than others. You can subscribe to Wafeless URLs. So if you have a particularly poor type, and what poor means in this case is they're pretty brittle. If any technical details change at the other end, it might stop working. The best kind are pretty flexible and should handle technical details changing. So if you get one through the tool and it's one of the bad kind and you subscribe and a good kind comes along, it'll email you and say, oh, we've got a better one now. And here it is. Um, we're just putting that up now for the UK Federation. 
It will be at ukfed-tools.ja.net slash URL generator. If you want to play with it now, it is at ukfed-tools.dev.ja.net. Sort the DNS name out in the next few days. It'll be available. We'll put a link to it on the UK Federation website, send some emails out, that kind of thing. Um, that's Bujan. So wrap it up, Bujan. If you have any questions, just grab me for lunch or whatever. Are there any questions now? Yeah. Hello. As a librarian who's trying to work with Raptor, I feel slightly offended at your use of <laughs> lots of pretty graphs. Librarians have been used to working with spreadsheets, as you pointed out at the beginning of the years. Yep. And we want a system that will work for us. And I'm wondering if you've got some options of developers working with librarians to provide an interface that actually does what they want. Okay, um, so Raptor can export to Excel and CSV and that kind of thing. And uh, one of the future options for Raptor is um, we're going to be um, developing the, the way you actually get to the data. So there'll be a, a better way of getting graphs, like a quick graph wizard and that kind of thing. Yeah, and as I said, I don't know, I'm interested in any of the librarians here are really interested in the pretty graphs that you produce at the Oh, I, I like yeah. pretty graphs, I'm not, I'm not a librarian, I like pretty graphs. Oh, you like pretty graphs. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Any others? Yeah. Just one small thing. We've had a quick look at Raptor, so but found the barrier was the use of Yum, because we're quite a Debian shop. I just wondered if there are any plans to see that in the future. Um, at some point in the future, so the question is about RPMs versus other Linux things, so Debian packages. I will at some point, but for now, if you just use Alien and convert the RPM to Dev, it works perfectly well because it's a very, very simple RPM because it's all Java stuff. Just Alien, it works perfectly well. Any more? Okay. Any more? Cool. Thank you.